All right, guys, so in today's video, we're gonna talk about the topic of ICT daily bias. Now, instead of thinking of the daily bias, instead of thinking about trying to predict where the day will close, what the candle will do, let's replace those words with how to find and build a narrative. That's gonna clear things up for you, and that's the topic of today's video. With that being said, let's get straight into a few examples. So I'm gonna break down how to find a narrative into three simple questions. Question number one is, what has price done in the last few hours? Question number two is, what is price currently doing? And question number three is, where should price go based on the previous two questions? So let's jump straight into the charts. This is an example from the 16th of the 10th this month, and this is from the London Open session. But keep in mind, this kind of thing will occur every single session. Ask yourself these three questions. Number one, as we talked about, is what has price done in the last few hours? Looking at the charts here, what has price done in the last few hours? We're currently sitting in silver ball. And imagine this is where you get to the charts, right? You get to the charts at this point and you're thinking, what has price done? Price has left relative equal highs, number one. Relative equal highs become a nice, good draw on liquidity. So you've got relative equal highs there, number one. What else has price done? Price has actually come down, right? So we've left relative equal highs, but price has actually stepped its way down. Now, a lot of people here are thinking, oh, I need to look for shorts, I need to look for shorts. But the question you've got to ask yourself is, have we swept liquidity on the way down in this move? And the answer here is yes. When you look at price action, what has price done in the last few hours? Well, guess what? We've swept sell side, we've generated low resistance, and we've just been trickling down. Automatically, I then ask myself, could we potentially reverse? Could we potentially retrace from this point in price action. Now to answer that question, and the answer is yes, I've got to think about number one, where are we sitting in the range? Or number two, have we swept time-based liquidity? So breaking it back down nice and simple, what have we done in the last one to two hours? We've created low resistance, we've swept sell side, and we've just trickled down in price. What is price currently doing? Well, price has currently just swept Asian sell side liquidity, so time-based liquidity, and we're currently within silver bullet. Where do I expect price to go? Where would I like price to go? I'd like price to reverse and at least pull back up into this swing high to this swing low, back up into the halfway point of that range. You don't need to know where price is going to go in five, six hours time. It's not necessary. What's necessary, and this is my model, is to look at what price has done in the last few hours, build a narrative based on that, and build a narrative based on have we swept liquidity? Have we rebalanced a fair value gap? Have we entered a macro? Have we entered silver bullet? And we're going to get into another example a bit later on. So looking at this, we've swept that time-based liquidity. Let's see what price does. Let's see if we offer any reversal signatures at this point in time where we're looking at the charts. Isn't that quite interesting? Look at how we actually sweep that sell side. We purge down, we push back up. And in doing so, we actually create this inversion fair value gap. Alongside that, guys, we break above these two down close candles. That there indicates what's called a change in the state of delivery. That's suggesting potentially price could move from bearish to bullish. This example so far, I really want to reinforce the point that any sweep of sell side or any sweep of buy side is not going to offer a high probability reversal. What makes this high probability is number one, we're inside a silver bullet. Number two, it's swept time-based liquidity being the previous session low. So look for that to happen. And then once that happens during a key time frame, you're simply looking for the entry model that suits your narrative. So for me, I like inversion fair value gaps. For other people, they use a change in the state delivery. And for some, they're waiting for a shift in structure and a return to a fair value gap. So now getting back into this chart, you can see there's so many different ways to enter this trade. You can enter from that inversion fair value gap creation. You can wait potentially for price to see if it's gonna pull back into this range. So let's have a look here. Do we pull back into this fair value gap? Let's mark this out, this bullish gap right here. So let's mark this one out. Notice how we don't return to that fair value gap. And some people might be saying, well, yeah, it's a breakaway gap, it is. Other people are waiting for a return back to this bullish gap. And this is one reason why I like to use inversions and potentially the change in the state of delivery because this is an advanced market structure shift. So like I mentioned before, it's not just any sweep of sell side or buy side. It has to be some important buy side or sell side during a key time frame. Ask yourself those three questions. What has price done in the last few hours? What liquidity has it left? Where's it moved to? What's it swept? 
what is price currently doing? And then based on those two questions and your answers, you should be able to generate a very simplistic narrative. It doesn't have to be complicated. You don't need to know where price is gonna go for the whole day, the whole week. It doesn't matter when you're trading like this. You just need to know where should price go in the next one to two hours and what has price done in the last one to two hours because that will actually form your narrative for the session, for the macro, for silver bullet, right? If you're trading a one hour window in silver bullet, what's the necessity or the hype about knowing where the daily candle is going to close? It's a one hour session across multiple hours of market being open. As we get to the middle of this video, guys, I hope you've been gaining some information. I'm trying to keep this nice and simplistic, trying to simplify the process. Three simple questions. What has price done? What is price doing? And then based on those two answers, that should give you a narrative. Now, does this always work out? No. So in these examples, I'm going to go through two. One would be a partial and a break even. The other one would be a full TP or a break even. But let's get into it. Let's get back in the charts. And again, if you like these types of videos, let me know. Question for you guys while you're watching this video. Should you need price to get to these highs to have a profitable trade? Yes or no? For me, the answer is no. I'm not going to expect or assume that the market 100% needs to get here. It should. Does it have to? No. There's nothing wrong with taking 10 handles. There's nothing wrong with taking a one-to-one. -one. There's nothing wrong with taking partials here, partials here, and then leaving a runner to see if it wants to get to these highs. Because imagine you're targeting this buy side. You're in the trade. You're now at break even. Your stop's been removed. Your risk has been removed. Price taps into that premium CV. Price pushes higher quite a little bit. Does it sweep that swing higher? What happens here? You're going to be sitting in a trade for over one hour now, watching the price go so close to your TP, you could have taken a partial or a profit. But what'd you do? You got greedy and now you get stopped at break even. So this is just a classic example of you have to pay yourself as a trader. Is it always going to work 100% of the time? No. Are you always going to get these massive pulls? No. But this is the beauty of how I trade in this model, this strategy. And sometimes it's not going to run exactly to where you want it to run to, but allow yourself to be 50% right and build a strategy that allows you to actually do that and still be profitable. Do not build a strategy that requires you to be 100% right. I must get a one to five. I must get a one to four. I must hit here to make profit. Flow with the market. Take what you need, take those partials and pay yourself. But with that being said, let's get into example number two. And this example would be a full take profit using a very similar strategy. But in this case, we're going to talk about ICT dealing ranges. Let's get into it. So let's talk through another example here. This is from the previous day, the 15th. And let's assume you apply the same strategy. This here is your Asian low. And again, Asian session lows are from seven to 12. That's why I like the class is the Asian session. The question for you is this. Imagine price is sitting right here, right? Price is sitting right here and you're thinking to yourself, okay, we've just swept Asian lows. Could we have some reversal? Could we have some reaction? Asking yourself those three questions. What has price done? We've swept Asian lows. What is price currently doing? Well, we're gonna wait for a signature. And in this case, we've got an inversion fair value gap right here. Where do I expect price to target? Buy side liquidity. It's a very, very stock standard model that after sweeping Asian highs or Asian lows, there's gonna be some kind of pullback or retracement. Your job is to wait for that to be swept and then look for the price signatures. This is important. Look for the price signatures when or if that gets swept. If price were to do this, crucial. If price were to do this, do I wanna take a reversal after sweeping Asian low? The answer is no. I'll then be targeting any other sell side points that rest here. But if we have a reaction during a key time frame after sweeping key time pace liquidity, I'm going to be taking the trade. Keep it mechanical, but keep it flexible, watching the price action, watching what price is doing. Now we've got that little inversion fair value gap here. That gives you an entry to go long. Your long position comes from here, or you can wait for a dig back down, or you can pyramid back into the position as we pull down. Stop goes below the body right here. And for me, if you're a part of my Discord, you know, I like to target 10 handles for my first TP level. Then most of the time I go to break even depending on what the market structure is doing. Price runs 10 handles, what to do, comes back and it would stop me at break even. For other people, that trade here would not be a break even trade. And maybe they'd take a little bit more in the market because they target these relative equal highs here. Ruben, like my idea was wrong. I was meant to try longs from that point. And the example we just went through previously, it's like, yeah, we hit one TP and then we got stopped to break even. It doesn't mean your narrative is incorrect. The market's going to flow. There's different points where the market can react from. And 
I'd be writing this down. I like to look for reactions after either sweeping time-based liquidity from a 15-minute fair value gap or from optimal trade entry. That's where I look for reactions. That's when I ask myself these questions. That's when I ask, what is price doing? Where has it moved? Where should it move to? If I get a reaction from this zone, I'm taking a trade, provided I've got a clear draw on liquidity. So in this example, you can see, right, this one would have been a TP or a break even, and that's completely cool. But we still have the rest of the London Open session, right? So when you're watching price, price and mucks around here, you're probably glad that you're out of the trade because this is really easy to get chopped up in. Price then pushes down a bit further, and you might be saying, well, why does price react from here for? Why do we actually react from here? Why don't we come lower? And this is where the dealing range theory comes in, or ICT dealing ranges. Now, for me, I keep it nice and simple, right? I keep it nice and simple. Swing low, swing high. Draw my Fibonacci from those points, mark that across. And I ideally want to be taking longs in a level of discount and shorts in a level of premium. Really important. Write that down. Notice how we react from this zone here. Really important too. In this zone, this is what you have to do. Ask yourself those questions. Again, one, two, three. Number one, what has price done in the last two hours? Price has accumulated and now manipulated. Where has price manipulated to? Into optimal trade entry. Based on those three things, we're now waiting for these reversal price signatures. Where are we going to target potentially? These relative equal highs that are generated previously in that chart that we were a part of. So, Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. You don't have to be right 100% of the time. Inside this fractal, we can see we've got that internal sell side sweep, right? Internal sweep of sell side. We're looking for an inversion. There's a little inversion here, but if not, there's this one right here. And it's simple and simplistic, long position, stop below the bodies or below these bodies, whichever one you prefer. You can target 10. You can target a little bit more. It doesn't really matter what you want to do here. It's up to you based on your risk management strategy. And could you hold on for the whole target? Of course you could, but do you need to? No. You're going to find this whole concept or this whole idea of ICT bias a lot easier. Bias is one thing, narrative is another. You put those two together with time and you've got a high probability or high chance model. And with that being said, guys, I hope you've got something from this video. If you like this video, let me know and we'll talk in the next one.